since I started using AI, I have never felt as creative or as productive or even as powerful as I do right now. This is Horizons, stories about what's next in the world, powered by Compass Data Centers. Hi, my name is Chris Krug. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm the CEO of a small AI startup called Future Proof Creatives. You know, a lot of people, I think, when they first start using different AIs, they sit down in front of them, they say they sign up for ChatGPT, and they sit down in front of the ChatGPT box, and they input something, tell me about myself or my company or whatever. And the answer they get is like, you know, maybe like somewhat accurate and somewhat impressive, but uh, maybe there's an error or maybe it's not as uh, good a job as they could have done themselves if they wrote it up, you know? And so people, I think, in those cases quickly dismiss its capabilities or um, maybe feel a, an un, a, a unrealistic sense of safety in their current job. I mean, that sort of makes sense. Like anytime you get some amazing new technology, there's like a surface level that you can mess with it on. And then there's a much deeper level that you can explore with. And so I have jokingly started saying to people like, just say no to dumb AIs. And by dumb AIs, I just mean anything that doesn't know a bunch of stuff about you and about the role that you want it to play before you get started. So for instance, I build custom GPTs for each of my clients and each of my projects. They have a system prompt that I've developed that tells them what their job is and what we're gonna be doing together for this client. And it's got a whole knowledge base built out as well of text docs and other things, PDFs that are their like annual reports, their marketing docs, their internal things about how they talk about themselves, maybe their brand guidelines, a writing style guide, a worldview and perspectives document of the individual or organization. And then I can start to have very intelligent questions with these things. If I think about AI as a tool, the types of tools I, th I think about it are like fire or electricity or the wheel. I haven't heard a really out there guy say that he thinks uh, AI should only be referred to as a tool if you refer to it as a tool like uh, society as a tool. Like, like, like humans moving into cities and organizing ourselves in this way is a tool through which all the mod modernity and knowledge and civilization flows. But we're talking about it on, on that kind of level, if a foundational um, level in terms of changing how humanity relates to each other and the world around us. A lot of the conversation around AI talks about like automation, efficiencies, and like reduction of costs and stuff like that. And definitely AI is making big inroads there and there's a lot that can be said for it. I'm using it in some of those ways in my studio. But there's a whole other aspect of the AI that is being less talked about and that's really about like the achievement of human potential and maximizing of creativity. And so you really gotta ask yourself like, um, how else can it be used beyond automation, speeding the efficiencies, cost reductions, and the rest. And so that's left a big wide space open for me to explore um, creativity, creative professionals, human potential, and how we really want to, to use these things. When I'm talking about being more creative and productive and powerful than I ever have before, I'm talking a lot about, you know, maximizing my own potential. You know, record a lot of my thoughts and I put them into a knowledge base. And much like compounding interest, this compounding effort of laying down layer after layer of my thoughts and my feelings and my work um, results in me having something, you know, quite powerful at the end that I can use for, for all sorts of, of different things. We're able to augment our memories. We're able to augment our creativity and our communication abilities. I think it definitely makes us superhuman in lots of ways. When I hear that by 2030, 50% of jobs are gonna be changed or replaced, that freaks me out. Not just because of like the change in our economy and the change to people's jobs and stuff, because I think that rep represents quite the identity crisis collectively. Um, we get a lot of our identity out of our jobs and our work and our careers. And, you know, in a lot of ways, that's not the whole story. And it might, uh, the future, you know, might ask of us to continue to round out and flesh out how we see ourselves in relation to people around us and the world if we're not getting our primary identity through um, our work. While I fear a lot of times like the consolidation of AI technology into the hands of just a few companies or governments, I think the more that I look at this and think about it, I realize that AI has great promise and potential for individuals, but I have serious concerns about how it affects us collectively and societally. I think that that's where the real work needs to be done. I think that AIs will continue to give us all sorts of interesting and useful um, tools and capabilities, some that seem even superhuman at times. However, the cost 
is going to be to us collectively as we try to retain a sense of shared cohesion of reality. This technology, unlike all the technologies that have gone before, it seems like, affects almost everybody equally. You don't have to be a business person or a technologist for AI to be having an impact on your life. We're seeing it with deep fakes amongst high schoolers. We're seeing it with robocalls and different things. We're seeing all sorts of ways in which AI is impacting normal humans' lives. That's really interesting in some ways because it means everybody gets a voice too. And in order to be able to exercise your voice on this kind of stuff, you have to increase your knowledge and have the vocabulary and have an understanding of what's going on out there so that you can influence the policy and directions of the future. It's also worth asking yourself, what are the opportunities for me here? Either to better understand myself by applying it on your own diaries, journals, transcripts, text messages, and all the types of data you've created in your whole life, or by better understanding the world around you. There's a lot of, of power that this stuff gives us, and um, I think that you should definitely engage with it in some way and try to figure out how you individually want to bring it into your life.